Hey, I hope you're having a great day. I'm working on some really exciting things that I can't wait to share with you, but they're not ready yet. So I thought I would take the time to kind of walk you through the ATM strategies on NinjaTrader. That's their order bracket. So it's when you have a stop loss and a take profit and one will cancel the other once you get there. In NinjaTrader, they call it the ATM or the uh, automated trade management strategy. And really it's kind of uh, just a very basic little algorithm that'll run on your trades to automate your trade strategies for your trade entries and exits. So uh, in order to do that, I'll kind of show you my favorite one and explain that to you. And then I think it will make a lot of sense if you want to uh, set up something similar or create your own, you'll kind of know how to do that. So when you first start out, you'll go to custom and it'll just be kind of blank like this. Since I already have some going, I'm going to show you this one. Um, so I use this one on the ES. That's why it's called the ES MM5. This is just my own personal naming system. You can call it whatever you want when you save it. So this is the ES because that's the instrument that I'm going to use it on. Uh, and the reason that I have that specific is I have the parameter on ticks. I'll explain that more in a little bit. So it's the ES MM5. And that just stands for money maker. And then five is the quantity that it's going to take. Cause I have a version that'll take four and three, but this is the one that uh, I ended up using the most. I don't really pay attention to the ones as much anymore. So uh, you can set the, uh, the order, you know, if you, if you don't want it to have GTC, you can use it just for daytime orders. And then the parameter type I have set to ticks cause I like this to be really precise. I almost always trade the ES. So I like to have this specific to the ES. The problem is if I want to go use this on the NASDAQ, I need to make a new one um, because the ticks are going to be totally different. Or if I want to go trade crude or something with this, uh, one of the ways around that is to kind of convert this to currency. Cause you can do currency percent price pips, any of those. I just, I just like to have it specific to ticks for ES, but I do have some that run on currency so that I can quickly throw them onto any chart, whether it's NASDAQ or crude or anything like that. And uh, if you've ever watched me trade live or have kind of watched some of my strategy videos, one of the ways that I uh, actually, you know, manage, one of the best ways to make profit in the market is to manage your trades well. So one of the ways that I manage trades is to take uh, the, the, the main portion of my trade off early and then try to capture the anything that comes after that in addition to that. So I kind of think of it as having my cake and eating it too. So the first three of this five, that's the main meat of my trade that I'm really looking to take. And um, I once that take portion is taken off, that's the cake that I want to eat right away. And then if I want to hold on to some cake for later, and see if we get the follow through or if you know a nice trend breaks out that's what these other two runners are for i don't really expect to get these they stop out a lot because if the the market's just not really willing to extend through the next ranges we're just not going to get that and that's okay with me i'm okay just getting these three and then kind of letting these go to break even so what i have going on here is uh immediately when this when I use this order whether I have the market whether I enter as a market order or a limit order it's going to automatically send out these targets and these stop losses for each one of these so three of the five that I take on ES and this could and I can use this same one on ES or MES it, since it's the same ticks I can use it on either so immediately Three of those are going to have a stop loss at 20 ticks and a take profit at 20 ticks. The next one uh, is also going to have the same stop loss. And then the fifth one will have that same stop loss, but they're going to have different profits. So I have one at 40 ticks and one at 80 ticks. And this is, uh, this is not really taking into account what's actually going on in the market where the levels or where VWAP is or anything like that. So what I'll do once this order is out is adjust these to more precise areas on the chart where I want the actual levels to be. Um, you all know I have the uh, don't be a dick for a tick offset. So if my level is 6085, I might put my order at 6083.25 because 
I, I don't want to be that guy that like the, the, the chart goes right up to my order and then just leaves me hanging. I, that drives me crazy. So that's why I just, that's kind of my mental offset. So I'll adjust those sorts of things. Or uh, if, if the stop loss is on the wrong side of VWAP or something, I'll kind of make those little adjustments. I do want to point out here that this is really kind of more of a scalping strategy. Hopefully that turns into a longer day trade. So because the stop loss is really close and everything, I have to be really careful about where I enter. And that's how I cut down on the stop loss actually hitting is being really, really patient with my entries. I'm mostly a level to level trader. So I'm, I'm really waiting for support and resistance and then watching price action when we get there to see if we actually have a trade set up at those levels. And I have to be really patient because if I'm not patient and I enter at the wrong uh, side of even a little bit of consolidation, this can stop out. So I'm still you know, paying attention to all of that. It's not a magic wand that makes all the trades work, but this really, really helps me kind of take some of the hard part out of trading and make it easier. So I automatically have some orders thrown out there that I can then kind of adjust. So I have three different take profit levels and I have the one stop loss, but it's broken up so I can move this individually if I want to. And that's kind of the main part of how I look at this. I really want that first three and then these are extensions. This third target, a lot of the times, I have it at 80, but a lot of times if uh, if we're coming off after data or we could you know, potentially have a really big move or a big trend breaking out, I might put this to something ridiculous and kind of let the trailing stop take over. So I'll explain how I have the stops taken how I have the stops working out here. The first one, because this is going to be, you know, out of the market at the first target, it doesn't need a trailing stop strategy. I mean, you could have one on there if you're doing something different than I am, but for, for my reasoning in this, in this way of managing my trades, I don't have it there. So uh, as soon as it takes profit at 20 ticks, there's nothing else to worry about on the stop. This next one, and I, I, I'll admit, I play with these stop strategies a lot because it can kind of um, depend on how aggressive I am feeling like trading these days. But so the, the, the next target, this is going to be if we kind of get that first extension. As soon as the first target hits, I want these to uh, trigger to break even. So what I do is I go into these stop strategies and this is the same as when we went to custom, you know, make a new custom. If you go to custom here, it'll pull up a brand new window and you can start from scratch. But to show you this one, I just call this one trailer at 40. Uh, what it does, and uh, this will automatically go to break even. You can use this or not use this. This is a separate thing. It'll automatically go to break even after we get just a little bit above that first uh, 20 tick target. And then, uh, so that we initially have this stop loss at 20 points, but then um, it's it's going to start trailing. So uh, I have the auto trail set up here. This is just a one stop. So at uh, 40 points, it's going to move the stop loss to 20 points. Uh, I hope I explained that well. I'll, I'll try to explain it better on this next one. So this third one we have, uh, this is the, the, the super target if we really, really get a great run. Uh, this one still has that same auto break even. I always want to protect this trade as soon as possible because I may not get to have my cake after I eat it. Someone may steal it from me. So I, I want to get that to break even right away. You can use that or not. But um, So this one's going to start trailing a little bit more aggressively. And this is the one that I end up adjusting more. So maybe I don't have this exactly where it should be, but this one will start trailing pretty aggressively. It's just always going to stay 20 points uh, or 20 ticks behind the, the new uh, high, basically. So this one, the, the reason that I have this one a little bit more aggressively is because usually I am kind of sitting at the computer managing the first target or two. And then this third one, this is where like if, um, if something's going on in the rest of the house or, or something like that, I'm going to end up a little bit distracted and wandering off. And this is where I want that to trail a little bit more tightly just to make sure that, you know, I'm not giving up something stupid. But um, that brings up another point. Once I'm actually in this trade, so I'll, I'm adjusting initially where the stop loss and the, the profits are in the actual market. So if I have a value area level here, I might use that or the VWAPs down here or the, the POC, I might use one of those levels 
or if I have a quant level, y'all know I've, I've been really enjoying the quant levels. So I'll uh, adjust, you know, a little bit more precisely, but then I'll do the same thing once it's trailing as well. So once we're trailing, if I don't like how tightly it's trailing, if it's trailing uh, more uh, too aggressively and it's trailing past the VWAP, then I'll keep pulling it back and kind of manage it that way. But the important thing is that these last two targets um, are not going to threaten my profits. So that's kind of the way I look at it. And you can do these however you want. Since I have this one specific to ES, I, I can't use this on NASDAQ or crude without changing it or otherwise I can use a currency. And I have some other ones set up that are just straight out trailing. I don't really want to show, I have one on NASDAQ that I'm working on. When it works, it works really, really well, but I, I don't love it yet. So I'm going to fine tune that a little bit more before I show it. But I would love if y'all showed me some of y'all's too, because I know, especially like on gold, I don't have anything that I love on gold yet. So y'all can really help each other on some of these other assets too. And then stay tuned because I'm really excited about these uh, next things that I have coming for you. And I will see you real soon. Love you. Bye.